I'm going to give you a little tour of my classroom to talk about ways that we've reduced waste. And all of the things I'm showing you, my class and I have discussed and weighed the pros and cons of different choices. And often we come up with things that I'm surprised um, that I hadn't thought of. So we discuss options, but this here is the core value when they come in on the first day and when I speak to the parents. It's why I believe we should be learning and it's to be a force for good in the world. And I talk about grit, curiosity and optimism. So being a force for good is the underlying message of my whole teaching philosophy that I talk with the kids about. So we have a common saying in English, um, we're going to throw the garbage away. We're going to throw the broken uh, pen away. And we really talk a lot about there is no away. There, it's somewhere in our landfill or being shipped overseas to be burned for electricity. There's no place where stuff goes that's invisible, like it goes somewhere. And so we really go to the root of that, like where our things go when we're done with them and, and someone else is paying the cost of that. We might not be paying the environmental cost, but someone is. And that's that whole idea of environmental justice tied in with poverty and uh, inequality and oppression. So we do take a tour of our landfill and our recycling center and then we we really question well where does it go and we try and follow the trail of where our recycling and garbage goes and when they see that so little is actually truly recycled with the exception of aluminum cans it, it drives it home to them that it is our job and our responsibility uh, and that's really important that their idea is the life cycle like stuff goes somewhere, it never really disappears a lot of it, and that helps them come up with plans on how to limit their footprint and the fact that it is their future that we've messed up and they're the ones who are going to solve the crisis and it is attainable, the, the solutions are in other countries already being done and that gives them a lot of hope. That idea that um, the solutions are already in place in other areas and we actually live in a place where we have a lot of power to make changes. If we lived in Bangladesh or um, a low uh, elevation island in the South Pacific, it's dire. Here we have a lot of privilege, we have a lot of room to tighten our belts, a lot of room to make changes to improve the level of waste and um, waste, yeah, all right. So at the beginning of the year, we, uh, for the first two days, we just throw everything in the garbage. I don't say a word about anything to do with how to sort. And after two days, I've saved it, we do a garbage audit. We lay it out on the floor and the kids uh, discuss how we could reduce waste. And they come up with ideas like composting, paper recycling, plastic recycling. And we really dig deep into that. And so in the end, we come up with, yes, we should paper recycle. And yes, we will compost, and we're supposed to take stuff like this home. Uh, we talk about the economic value of buying the yogurt in bulk or whatever, and dividing it up themselves, how they save money and it's less waste. When they do bring single use, I ask them to rinse it and take it home. I'm not going to be recycling plastic in the classroom, it just attracts insects. So we do that garbage audit and we come up with the idea of composting and we discuss who could compost and how we could do that. And then we talk a lot about paper. All right, so paper, we talk about how to reduce the need for paper and I tell the kids that this, loose leaf, is most often made with recycled content. So this is a better choice as opposed to the photocopier paper, which is what we're often using. So once they kind of talk that over and the value of using a product that's not made from a fresh tree, they are not so grumpy about writing out a bit more. But when I do photocopy, I um, obviously double side and I try and put two messages on the same page. So for example, the spelling test, I would do three on a page. I wouldn't waste the paper. And I would use paper that has been rejected from the printer because it was a, a mistake. So oftentimes on the back of these things, it's something that someone didn't uh, want and threw in recycling that I print onto. I can use the bypass feeder. And the other thing about paper, the kids and I talk about new school supplies every year. And 
I was really surprised that they didn't mind the idea of using old stuff. So when I gave out the school supplies, um, I said I would give them an incentive to have it look really good at the end of the year. So in June, when the school year is done, I collect all their duo tangs, and if they're good, they get a larger um, brownie, like I make brownies, and there's different sizes, regular, large, and extra large, and the kids who have taken really good care of their stuff, they give it to me and they get an extra large piece of brownie. The same with school supplies, I tell them, like our school um, kids pay to purchase supplies from the school, so they get their supplies and I tell them if the stuff that can be still in good shape, if it's still in good shape, I'll also incentivize that to take good care of it. And that's that critical thinking around um, respecting um, resources. So we don't need to wreck things. We could uh, keep them and treat them well. Hi, we're members of the green team. Now, can you pretend I'm an apple core? In a landfill, I'm covered up and sealed in. We don't want any icky chemicals or toxins to get into the water and land nearby. So I'm stuck in the landfill, there's no air, and I'm slowly starting to decompose. Since you're, since you're squashed down super tight, there's no air. This decomposing is called anaerobic fermentation and it creates a megamine greenhouse gas called methane. Yuck! It's up to 35 times worse for the climate than carbon dioxide. Why? Because in the landfill there is no oxygen. Now pretend I am the same apple core. If I get lucky and end up in a compost, I, co I decompose faster and do not create much methane because there is air in the, in the compost with me. This is called aerobic fermentation. That's a big mouthful, aerobic fermentation. This way, better f this way, better for the climate because less methane is so release is released. So, please compost your fruit and veggies. Thanks for watching. Bye. All right. So, the other thing students noticed was um, around the dry erase boards. We buy this uh, in big boxes in our school, but um, what we do once it runs out, we fill it up mostly, mostly with water and a bit of white vinegar, like a one to 20 ratio, and the vinegar works really well. So I've also read you can use hydrogen peroxide, but we do not need more than one of these in the classroom, and we reuse it. The other thing I couldn't uh, believe we were able to do, but during the pandemic, we use paper towel, and now paper towel only for bodily fluids. Um, vomit, uh, blood, that kind of thing, and the kids know where it is, but the rest of the time they each have a little towel that uh, are ripped up old towels, and they have it at their desk. We have a little clothesline on each desk, and they use this all week or whenever they need a new one, and then they're washed at the school. So that's helpful. And then we came to the biggest challenge of all. The kids really were frustrated with Expo markers. They believe, and I believe them. I, I agree that there's less ink in these every year. And you can recycle them supposedly, but I really don't believe in a lot of truth around plastic recycling. So uh, we wrote Expo as a class. They dictated the letter to me asking that these should be refillable or at least have more ink. And uh, sadly, we did not hear back from them. So we took it into our own hands and you're gonna follow me over here. Here we go. We have a station over here with a soccer sock and we put the expo when they run out in the soccer sock and we spin it super fast for five seconds like this and not much longer because it'll explode out the end and I've had a mark like up my classroom of ink but it gives you about 20% more life in your marker and that works for any marker just do not do it too long five seconds 
So then when they're done, and they're really dead after that, we're collecting them right here. And this is already a year's worth of marker. Like, it's so terrible, but we are going to use them for an art installation. We're not sure how. But that was the only solution we could come up with. And that's it. I'm gonna... And I forgot to tell you, we just attached the cloth just like this, or some of them, they like the clothesline. They, um, it depends what they're into. They decide. And the other thing I wanted to point out is just the whole idea of rethinking and to really ask the students for input because they come up with great ideas. For example, we would have these bands, they're kind of like a fidget, but they were always wearing out and rotting. And I said to the kids, what can we use? I'm not buying these, we're not waiting for the order to come in, etc." And they actually came up with the idea of, of course there's no one around here, right here, right here, yeah, the inner tube. So the bike shop saved them for us. They're about to be recycled, so we're actually uh, finding a new life for them, and they do not wear out. They're great. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the, we use the projector a lot, because then I'm not using expo markers, and um, the kids aren't getting a lot of photocopy paper. So that was our solution for the expo markers. A part of the solution was using the projector. And um, we're going to walk over to my sink. The whole school bought class sets of these and cutlery so that we don't have to be using disposable, and we never do. And if there's a school function, we just bring them down to wherever it is, and because they're color-coded, more numbers, we can find them and get them back in our classrooms. That's it. Okay, so the other thing um, I talk about with the kids giving the laminator a break. I, this is a little pet peeve of mine. We laminate so much as teachers, it's like our favorite thing to do. So um, I'll use cardstock if I have to, but we definitely give the laminator a break. And in our school, we, we've become really good. We're not taping things anymore. We use sticky tack. Uh, just a little bit less waste. And one of the kids this year pointed out to me that why am I using a stapler to put things up when I could be using tacks? And I'm like, that's a good point. So the kids are really great. We use tacks to put things up and we really try and give the stapler a break. Um, the critical thinking component of my teaching revolves around getting students actively involved. So. We would often go to climate strikes, the Greta Thunberg Fridays for Future climate strikes, but of course other teachers were really not interested because it is a little bit difficult and there's conflict with parents and we found a way around it in our district to get other teachers uh, motivated and that was through this man. This is my superintendent and he had the idea of not having climate strikes, but having expos. So we had um, big, like, science fairs with a class from the high school and a class, my class at the elementary level, making science fair booths about reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And that's what you're seeing here. So we had hands-on booths. Everything were ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, from making your own toothpaste to um, learning about transportation of food. And it worked. We got 600 children out our first attempt. So just that little mindset of making it not a climate strike, which is a political event, but making it a climate expo where kids were coming on a field trip to learn more about greenhouse gas emissions. And it worked. To really get kids motivated to have a more global approach to their thinking about waste and resource management, I did a lot of projects like um, building local a local trail for kids to try and have a low impact that to see to show that their actions have value and then we did a lot of work around biking to school and motivating kids by having them have a lap through the school if their class had 90 percent or more participation in biking to work we raised money to plant trees we brought indigenous knowledge keepers into the classroom. We wrote letters to local politicians. Uh, we fundraised for a outdoor classroom. We did a photography unit all about nature. 
and noticing the small beauty around us that is worth protecting. We looked at building sustainable houses and a full analysis of how to reduce waste at home. We also came up with ideas at Christmas uh, and we put them on display downtown of things people could buy that were experiences as opposed to more um, products, buying more stuff. We also did a massive unit um, on looking at the life cycle of different everyday products like jeans, pencils, uh, batteries, etc. And that was very eye-opening for the kids to see the life cycle from uh, extraction to um, manufacture all the way through to consumption and disposal.